Hi, my name is Steve. In this video, I'd like to provide a walkthrough on an unpack called Observability Maps. With the rapid adoption of efficient message queues such as Apache Kafka, proprietary communication protocols, or high-performing RPC such as gRPC as commonly seen in the Golang community, this nerd pack is intended to go beyond the traditional automated maps that you've seen in the market. We strongly believe that you know your environment better than us, and we want to give you the ultimate freedom to create the ideal map in your environment. You can get complete visibility into metrics, events, logs, and traces all in one map. This map right here is also open source and available to install from our New Relic application catalog. Here is the end result of my personal map. In this map, I have a mixture of data collected by New Relic, such as browser, mobile, synthetics, APM, and some services which I don't have any New Relic data at all. I also can add open source telemetry such as Prometheus by using the Prometheus Open Metrics integration. And to make it better, once my map is completed, I can share it as a JSON file and store it in GitHub for architecture peer review and version control. This option is extremely useful for software architects where you can define key metrics for each app or each service and have a bigger view including services that might not be collected in New Relic. So right here and right here, these are the examples where I have third-party services which don't have any data, but I can still create a custom node to have a better view of my whole environment. Once the node pack is installed, just proceed ahead by creating a blank map. Just go up right here, create map, give it a name, and off you go. To save us some time, I have a blank canvas, which this is the landing page you will see when you first create the first map. After that, just remember to go here and click Add a node. Select a type. Just for this example right here, let's go with entity to start with. And remember to select the domain right here. After that, just remember to select the account of your choice. In this example, we'll be using our demonstration data. And remember to select on fetch entities. Here, you can go through a list of applications that you have, or you can type directly in the search box. Click add. And you, see, you should see your first node appearing on the canvas. Let's drag in the middle. And if there's new Relic agent installed the app, when you hover your mouse over, especially on the top, you should see a set of metrics available already for that node. Now let's add another service, but right here, I'm gonna use a thing called view connected entities. If you remember to right click, and you can actually click right here called view connected entities. And if the new Relic agent is able to see dependencies automatically between apps, when you click on this option, you should see a list of services that you can actually add already right here. So I'll keep it simple. I'll just add my plan service, login service, and inventory service. And you can see it's actually appearing in the UI already. Let's just grab, grab it to my backend. Just drag it. And now I'm going to go through the same exercise again by adding on the front end. Go to notes, select type. Entity. This time I'm going to add something on the front end, browser, selling an account, batch entities. I'm going to do the same, add. I'm going to go through the same process, view connected entities. You can see I have some examples right here, but this time I want to add them automatically in the canvas. Right click, I can add them automatically using this function called add connected services. All right. So you can see here, it's starting up quite well. We can see some nodes already right here. Now, what if I want to delete? What do I need to do? Just move your mouse, click on the node, right click, delete. Right click again, delete. Now, let me show you another example right here. What if I want to add a custom node? Go to nodes, type, select on custom, and give it a name. So this time I'm going to use API and click on create. Drag my custom node, I'm going to move it to the back. Now, one thing you've noticed right here with my custom node, it has no awareness that this custom node maybe is connected to a specific service right here. And if I want to do that, what do I need to do? Just remember to go up to right here, links. And what we can do here is we can actually connect those links together. 
As seen earlier, if the New Relic agent can see the dependencies, you can add them automatically via add connected entities. However, this option right here, what if you're using something like non-HTTP traffic or apps that doesn't have New Relic agent installed? You can actually do this manually via manage links. So to add a link, you must select a source. So this is an example right here. I'm just going to use login. And I'm going to select a target node. In this example, I'm just going to use the custom node I'm I created earlier. Click add. And just that, I can just add and connect them together. This is especially useful if you have a lot of custom nodes. You can actually add those connections manually. Likewise, you can do the same to delete links between each source right here in my target node. So to do that, just go to links, click. On, I was going to select my source. Let's say, say login, just an example. I'm going to do the same with my API custom node delete. There you go. All right, let's add some custom image to our nodes. To do that, just remember to go to right here, icons. And just remember to select new custom icon sets, give it a name, and paste the hosted image URL right here. One thing to note, you can only use PNG, not SVG or JPG. There's something to be mindful of with the example as seen right here. Here, you'll see a few input boxes, such as healthy, warning, critical. The reason why we have this is because you can show different icons based on different alerts. Now, let me show you some example which I had earlier. So status, as seen right here, I have different icons displaying for different alerts notifications, such as healthy, warning, and critical. So this is actually mapped directly to the New Relic alerts, so you actually can change different icons based on the different alerts notification right here. Now, especially for custom nodes, if you have, don't have any New Relic data, such as API right here, healthy is the default selector for custom nodes if you don't have any pre-configured alerts. Now, let me show you this example right here. Let me go to web portal, click edit, to add a custom icon set right here, just select the one that you created earlier. In this example, I'll be using status. There you go. I've loaded my healthy icon set right here. Now for this particular icon right here, as mentioned earlier, we automatically pick up the status and information from all the alert status for this particular service if it's monitored here in New Relic. So here for plan service, I'm going to use this same example right here. Go to status. Now, this is showing me the warning alert. So if I go to icon, this is actually showing this part right here. So as mentioned earlier, you can actually put different types of icons with different type of alert notification for your specific node. Now for custom node, just go to right here, edit. And this time I'm going to show you this same example, API. And this, as mentioned earlier, this is using the healthy default URL as seen earlier, right? So hopefully you can add more icons as seen earlier on my completed map. I have quite a lot of different icon sets and I already input in the environment and just feel free to go ahead and customize the map according to your, uh, that you want in your environment. Now, one thing is leveraging New Relic's powerful telemetry platform, we can actually write custom queries to display any data type that we want on the map. It could be front end, it could be back end or custom events or of choice. Now, we don't have a lot right here, so let me go back to my completed map. So what do I mean by that? Like for example, when I hover my mouse, I can see a set of default metrics is already provided to me. But what if I want a specific metrics of my choice? So let me show you some example. When I click on web portal, it gives me, let's say, the request per minute. If let's say when I go to another backend web portal, it gives me my errors count for a specific time frame. When I hover my mouse, let's say this example, it give me the percentile. And let's say going back to plan service, when I click on right here, it give me the latency right here. Now, this is something that's possible. There's several ways you can do this. And let me show you an example right here. So let's just say, let's go to an empty note right here. Just click on edit. And several ways you actually can put in the new relic query. You can do, right, just remember that you can go to hover metrics, custom NRQL right here. Or you can actually go into the main chart right here. You can also can do for customer learning, which I'll show you later on. 
Now to start this process, just go into the New Relic dashboard that you're going to create or you already have one right here, which I'm going to show you in an example later on. Just remember to go to the top right hand side, Chart Builder, and fire up this particular uh, Chart Builder right here. The first part right here, just remember to make sure that you're pointing to the right account that you want to get data from. And you can start with right here. Let's just say I'm interested with response time. I'm interested with the average. And it gives me the preview right here. But the one that I really want to show you right here is you can start with the basic mode. This is the basic mode that you should see right here. The one I want to point you to is the advanced mode NLQL. So NLQL stands for New Relic Query Language. The syntax right here is very similar to SQL. So if you know how to write SQL queries, this is something that's going to be very easy for you. And this is the one that I want you to get into. Because you can see the query, how we construct the previous preview just now. And this is where you can actually customize right here. So in short, this is the query that we're seeing right here. Just select the metrics or event type. And we give it, let's say, a customized name. Form a specific event type. We do a time series graph, let's say, since a specific time frame right here. Just to save us some time, I have some examples right here, which I'll share later on in the documentation. I'm just going to copy it right here. I'm not going to paste it. And remember to validate your result before you move this query into the map. Now, let me show you my completed map right here as an example. Now, if, I, if, you, if you've seen earlier for my web portal, just go to right click, edit. And this time, my main chart as seen earlier, I already have a query as is seen earlier, which I already validated in my chart builder. And this time, I'm going to use billboard. So when I click on it, I can actually see a preview around it. The same thing for web portal for this particular example. I did exactly the same. Click edit. And I have my main chart right here. So this is, I'm actually looking at error rate for a specific time frame. You can do the same as mentioned earlier when I hover my mouse here on the top. I can see my default metrics, but I actually can customize it to you too using NRQL. And in order to do that, right click, edit, and this time remember to go to hover metrics right here. So let me just copy this out just to show you an example right here. And this time let me just paste it in. And this time I'm looking at the percentile based on 50, the 50 percentile, 90 percentile, and 95 percentile. So let me just go back to this map right here. And if this is done correctly, if I, when I hover my house, I could see my custom metrics that I've defined earlier. One last part right here, just to wrap it up, on, especially on LQL. Let me go to plan, plan service right here. So as mentioned earlier, I talked about this concept where by default, it actually looks at the alert status that you have in your environment and based on let's say that's default on New Relic, we would display a specific icon based on a healthy state, warning state, and critical state. You can actually overwrite this in the node sometimes for a very specific reason. And to do this, you can go to edit and you can go to custom alerting. So right here, let me just copy this out as an example. And here, just remember to validate that and you can do it exactly for custom alerting. So right here, once this is done correctly, you just copy this query that you've seen earlier into NLQL custom alerting right here. And from there, you can actually play around with the operator where you can override the default alerting that's formed the New Relic platform. Maybe you want to be more aggressive, especially in this observability map. Here, you just remember to pick the right operator and give it a value right here. So to show you the difference right here, what I really mean, and here is actually showing me a critical alert while in my new map, this is actually showing my warning alert because this is coming from the default New Relic alerting platform. While in this, my completed map, I'm actually overriding the alert right here using NLQL. Lastly, just to wrap it up, maybe you actually don't know, but you actually also can define metrics or based on this individual line right here. To do that, just move your mouse right here. Remember to right click, edit. There you go. And you actually can just put a custom NLQL right here, and you can display metrics based on a specific line. To wrap this section on custom query, I'm going to add a custom dashboard right here. To do that, let me go back into my new maps. Right here, all the custom dashboard in New Relic start with the queries I've shown you earlier. 
The beauty about observability maps is you can associate the dashboard to a specific node too. So for example, in order to do that, remember to go to edit. I go to my dashboard right here to select the account, batch dashboard. Now right here, I do have a lot in this example right here. Now I did show you this dashboard earlier on and we're gonna use this example to start with. Let's go back to my dashboard right here. So as you can see, it matched exactly the name that I have right here. And now I'm gonna select select and save. Now, once this is done correctly, you should able to do this. Select edit, sorry, right click, and you go to view dashboard right here. And you'll see exactly the dashboard I've, seen, I've shown you earlier. So this is quite useful too, especially for a specific node. Not only you can attach specific dashboard around it, you can put your custom metrics, you can put a lot of customization out around a specific node. So we want to, as mentioned earlier, we want to give you the ability to actually display any metric type that you have in mind for a specific node. Now, one last thing is just to wrap it up on a few things is you probably notice distributed tracing and locks right here. So New Relic offers distributed tracing for modern during and analyzing modern distributed systems. You actually can see software requests end-to-end -end and troubleshooting is easier and faster once you enable it. Distributed tracing does this by showing you the request it travels through a distributed system. One thing to note, this is only available once distributed tracing is enabled through the configuration settings. So I will provide all the links right here. Just remember to enable this in your environment. Once this is done correctly, let me go back to my completed map right here. Just click on a specific node, right click. And I want to look at view distributed traces. Once you're in the UI with the node that you select, you can see requests that travel between services. So let me just pick one example right here. Each segment that you see right here is actually recorded as a span, which represents the amount of time spent in those services. All the spans of a request are combined into a single distributed trace to give you the picture of an end of an entire request right here. Now let's go back to my map right here. You can actually do the same thing, especially if you have new relic logs that's enabled in your environment. And we can do exactly the same for logs. Just right click. Once you have logs enabled right here, you actually can view on logs. Now, this is only available if you have enabled New Relic Logs in your environment. So this is the documentation for it. So New Relic Logs offer a fast, scalable log management platform that allows you to connect your logs data with the rest of your telemetry data. So you actually can leverage pre-built plugins with some of the most commonly open source log forwarders such as FluentD, FluentBit, and Logstash to make it simple to send data from anywhere into the New Relic platform. So let's go back to map, my maps right here. In this example, the UI provides deep visibility into the application that I selected on the map to reduce mean time to resolve all MTDR and quickly troubleshoot production incident. So logs right here provides a very nice way to connect your log data with the rest of the telemetry data, allowing you to get to the root cause of the problem quickly without losing context and switching between environments. Now, one thing in this map right here, which is very powerful that maybe you're not aware is, you can also investigate alerts and deployment markers for all the nodes that you selected right here. In order to see that, just remember to go to timelines right here, and you can see all of them in the UI. You can also actually click on them for deeper investigation. So let's say entity, I'm interested in this specific entity that's at which I selected on the map. And right here, now I can see performance data, but I can also see the alerts around it too. So this section here for alerts, the platform allowed you to set up robust and customize the alerts policy, anything that you can monitor. Yes, we do have a, quite a robust documentation we go through step by step. Just remember to configure alerts in environment and you should see this in your observability maps right here. Uh, for this section right here, this section right here, this is deployment markers where you can actually look for deployments that that's being deployed for all the nodes that you selected right here. So let me just go through this example right here for this section. 
deployment of application can be very risky. So we give you the ability to correlate those deployment events to the performance of an application as seen right here, such as response time and throughput, app decks, error rate, CPU, memory, and database right here. There are several options that's available to manage your deployment data. Just remember to go to our documentation. We do provide a very thorough documentation. I actually give you several options how you want to do this via the REST API or the APM agents right here. Now, just to wrap it up, now if you notice right here in my map, I do have a very beautiful background right here, but not in my new map. In order to do this, let's just go back to my map right here. In order to customize the image of your background right here, just go to settings and remember to pick the URL that you have in mind. In this example right here, we'll be using Unsplash. So Unsplash has a nice collection of beautiful image, which you can use as a wallpaper right here. For this example right here, I'm using a specific image right here. It's a beautiful uh, view of, a night, of the night sky right here. And luckily I have a, my links that I can actually copy straight away and I put into that my settings right here. Copy the URL, go back right here, just paste it in, save, and there you go. But right here, you exit, you, I will share this link for you so you can have exactly the same view if you're interested to use that in your environment right here. To summarize, we have gone through how to create and delete a node, adding links, customizing icons, adding custom queries. You look at distributed tracing, logs, alerts, and deployment markers right here. Hopefully this short video tutorial has shown you some initial steps which you can take to build your own observability maps. Have fun!